here are your last two targets for Unit 7, targets 12 and 13. So we're going to really, um, on target 12 here, tap into what you guys already know about uh, composition of functions. So what we're going to do is determine if two functions are inverses. So you guys talked about inverse functions a little bit last time. Um, and so we're going to use that idea of inverse functions and take that a little bit further today as well. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to give you two functions. We'll call them f of x and g of x. And we're going to determine if they are inverses by using a composition of functions. So as a reminder, a composition of functions is when you take one function and you plug it into the other function. So what's going to happen here is if our functions are inverses, they should both simplify, both compositions should simplify to just x. So that's what this is saying up here, but we'll actually go through some examples and I'll show you how that works. All right, so on A, we're going to verify that f of x equals x plus 3 and g of x equals x minus 3 are inverse functions. So I'm going to start by evaluating what is f of g of x, and I'm going to color code this. So I'm going to take the g of x function and plug it into the f function. So the f function is x plus 3. I'm just copying that from above. But what I'm going to do with a composition of functions is I'm going to take out this x, and wherever that x was, I'm going to replace it with g of x, which is x minus 3. And from there, I'm going to simplify. So I really didn't need those parentheses, so it's just x minus 3 plus 3, which equals x. That's what we want our composition to simplify to, just x, the input variable. So then, in order to say these are inverses, we actually have to do the opposite as well. So instead of doing f of g of x, we have to evaluate g, and we have to plug in f of x for x. So we're doing the opposite of what we just did. So I'm going to start with the g of x function, which is x minus 3. I'm just copying that down from above. I'm going to take out the x and replace it with f of x, which is x plus 3. And again, I don't really need these parentheses. I'm just using that to um, help you see me plug in these other functions. And then you simplify. So x plus 3 minus 3 would just be x. So since both of these functions simplified to just x, f of g of x and g of f of x both equaled x, these are inverse functions. All right, so let's try that again on b. So on b, we have f of x is 2x plus 6, and g of x is 1 half x minus 3. So I'm going to start with f of g of x. And again, I'm going to color code this. So we're going to plug in g of x to the f function. So I'm going to start with the f function, which is 2x plus 6. But I'm going to take out the x, and wherever the x is, I'm going to replace it with the g of x function, which is 1 half x minus 3. And we're going to simplify this. So I'm going to have to distribute that 2 to start off with. So 2 times 1 half is just 1x. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6 plus 6. And this simplifies to x, which, we, which is what we want. Now we have to do the opposite. So I'm going to do the g on the outside and I'm going to plug in f of x to the g function. So starting with the g function, that's 1 half x minus 3. I'm going to take out the x, and I'm going to replace it with f of x, which is 2x plus 6. Now we're going to simplify, so I'm going to distribute that 1 half. So 1 half times 2 is 1x. One, 1 half of 6 is 3. 
and this also simplifies to x. So since both of those equations simplify to just x, these are inverse functions. Remember, um, with inverse functions we talked about yesterday, the x's and y's, they switch in the table, and also if we graph both of them, they would be a reflection in the line y equals x, that diagonal line. Just giving you some throwback from last class so you also remember what it means when we have inverse functions. Okay, so one more problem, same idea here. I'm going to start with f of g of x, which means I'm going to start with the f of x function, and I'm going to plug g of x in for x. So f of x is 2 fifths x plus 4. I'm going to take out that x, and I'm going to replace it with g of x, which is 5 halves x minus 4. You can use your calculator to help you if you want to with these fractions, or just use your properties of fractions. So 2 fifths times 5 over 2, since those are reciprocals, it actually just equals 1x. And then 2 fifths times negative 4, that would be negative 8 over 5, and then plus 4. So I don't have a calculator in front of me, so I don't know what negative 8 over 5 is, but I know that when you add it to 4, this is not going to simplify to just x. There's no way. So as soon as you have one of these situations that doesn't simplify to just x, you can stop. And your answer here would be that they are not inverse functions. In order to be inverse functions, both f of g of x and g of f of x have to simplify to only x. All right, so taking a look at your next target. Looking at your next target, target 13, um, you're going to find the inverse function using these three steps every single time. Um, so first step is we're going to replace f of x with y. So you'll notice on these it says f of x equals, so it's going to be y equals. And then you're going to switch x and y, and then we're going to solve for y. So again, we're finding the inverse function here. And this step should make a little bit of sense, especially this step right here. This should make sense with what we already know about inverse functions. Because remember on the tables, we switched x and y as well. Um, so that's a common theme whenever you're talking about inverse functions. So on this first problem, I'll go ahead and outline what those three steps look like. So your first step is to replace f of x with y. And then your second step is to switch x and y. So x equals 3y minus 7. So notice what I did here is I just picked up where the x and y were, and I switched their locations completely. And then your third step is to solve for y. So I would add 7 to both sides. So I can't combine those, so I'm just going to write x plus 7 equals 3y. And then to get rid of the 3, you have to divide by 3. And then this would be your inverse function. So you have 1 third x plus 7 thirds equals y. And something I want you guys to get in the habit of is to use your function notation to note your inverse. So instead of doing f of x, you do this f to the negative 1 of x, and that means, hey, this is the inverse function. So going back to our last target, if we were to take the original equation and this equation and do f of g of x and g of f of x, they would both equal x because those are inverses. So we're finding those inverses here. So on b, I'm not going to do the 1, 2, and 3, but I'm going to go through those same steps. I'm going to replace f of x with y. I'm going to switch x and y. And now I'm going to solve for y. So I'm going to add 5. And then if I'm going to solve for y, I need to divide by negative 1. So I get negative x minus 5 equals y. So 
So then I'm going to go ahead and write my function notation for my final answer. Taking a look at C, so on C we're going to do the same steps. So start by replacing f of x with y. So instead of f of x, we're going to do y equals. And now I'm going to switch x and y. And then I'm going to solve for y. So I have x plus 54 equals 12y, and I'm going to divide everything by 12 to get x by, or to get y by itself. So this would be 1 12th x, 54 over 12, that would simplify to 27 over 6, oh, which simplifies more, so that would be, I divide that by 3. That would be 9 over 2, I believe. Yeah. And then using your function notation. All right, last problem. It's the same idea, just new numbers. So replace f of x with y. We've got some fractions here, so we'll see how that impacts us. And then switch your x and y. And then add your 4 thirds over. And I'm just going to leave it just as a fraction, even though it looks a little ugly. So our next step would be to divide by 2 thirds, but I want you guys to remember instead of dividing by a fraction, you could always multiply by the reciprocal. But remember to multiply everything over here by the reciprocal, and that would cancel out that 2 thirds. So now we have 3 over 2x, and then if I multiply that, that would actually just give me 2. And then I'm going to take one step to go ahead and put this in our function notation with our inverse of f of x notation. So we're using a couple of the targets that you previously learned, so it's just some ideas from inverses from um, last class, and then also using that idea of composition of functions, especially on target 12. All right, so those are your notes over 12 and 13. That wraps up our seventh unit. Only one more unit. You'll be okay.